Hi, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 2, Atomic Structure. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 2.2 Quantum Mechanical Model, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to sketch the 3D shape of the S, P, and the orbital, which is in part 2 of the video, which is in this video. For the learning outcome of A and B, we have looked about that in part 1 of the video, which is in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, please watch it now. So without any further ado, let us start with part 2 of the video first. So the shape of atomic orbital, specifically for S orbital. So the S orbital happens when L is equal to 0. So when L is equal to 0, then our M here will also equal to 0. So we only have one choice of the orbital. And as what you know that, the L orbital here, when it is equal to 0, then it refers to S orbital. 1 refer to P, 2 refer to D, and D is equal to F. Okay, and the value of m will depend on the value of l. So when l is 0, m is, is equal to 0. And since that we only have, can have one digit, then we have only one orbital. And for the s orbital here, it refers to a spherical shape in which they have a nucleus at the center. And since they are existing in the spherical shape, you know that the probability of finding electron at the distant r from the nucleus is the same from all direction. And when the, uh, the number of the energy level increases, then the s orbital will get larger. So in order for us to sketch uh, the s orbital, we need three axes because we are talking about 3D region, three-dimensional shape. So we're going to have our x axis here, and we need to label that. And then we're going to have our y axis. And then we're going to have our z axis that passes through the intersection between x and z. And now we're going to draw our s, our s orbital. So our s orbital here is a spherical shape. And then we're going to draw it like this. Okay. And you're going to see that the center of the nucleus will have the same uh, radius along the region here. And now we're going to draw that again, but now for a different energy level, which is 2s. So similar thing, you're going to draw the orbit, the axis first, which is the x axis, y axis, and z axis. And now we're going to draw the 2s. So you know that when the energy level increases, the size of the orbital will get larger. So you need to draw a bigger spherical in comparison to your 1s. And now let's say if you want to draw the deep 3s, uh, you need to repeat the same process, which is the drawing the axis, which is the x axis, the y axis, and as well as the z axis. And since we are talking about 3s orbital, then the spherical shape is going to be much, much larger than before. Alright, so that's all for the s orbital. Now we're going to move on to the p orbital. So the p orbital happens when l is equal to 1. Okay? And it has a dumbbell shape. So when L is equal to 1, you know that there are going to be three values of M, which is negative 1, 0, and plus 1. And for this reason, the P orbital is going to have three uh, subshell, which is Px, Py, and Pz, as written as here. Okay, And of course, N here can be 2, or can be 3. So it depending on the question. So it can be 3px or 2px, for example. So the energy level here uh, will be depending on the question. Okay? And the similar thing, when the energy level increases, the p orbital will get larger and larger. So for now, uh, we know that the p orbital will have a knot at the nucleus, which, which means that the dumbbell will separate at the middle, the half part and the other half. So in order to understand more about that, let us look into the sketching here. So when you are talking about the p orbital, which is the dumbbell, you need to remember about one thing, which is on the axis. So the sketching here needs to be on the axis. For example here, when you already draw your x axis, y axis, and z axis, 
when you want to draw your px, for example, in this case, 2px because n is equal to 2, you know that the drawing of your dumbbell is going to be on the x axis. Okay? And now you're going to repeat that for py. Let's say 2py. And now, as what you can see, your dumbbell shape here is going to be on the y axis. And then they're going to be a knot in the middle. So the knot is a is a point where it's going to separate the half node and the, uh, the half loop and the other half loop here. Okay, so remember on the axis. And now we're going to repeat that again for 2pz. So since we are talking about z, so the loop here is going to be on the z axis and the other half here is going to be on the z axis and it separates in the middle here in order to produce the knots. Okay. So this is how you draw the p orbital. Now we're going to look into the d orbital. So the d orbital happens when l is equal to 2. And since you know that l equal to 2, there are going to be five possible values of m. So m can exist as negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. And because of this, they're going to have four d orbital and plus another one. So the total orbital that they have is going to be 5d orbital. So 4 of the d orbital will have 4 lobes that is perpendicular and 1d orbital that has like a donut shape curling at the center. So for the d orbital, you just remember as in between. Okay? In between. And for the 5d orbital here, they are known as dxy, dxz, dyz, dx square minus y square and dz square. So let us look into the each of this orbital here one by one. So let's say if you have dxy here, when you draw the axis of x, y, and z, as I mentioned, remember in between, because when it's labeled as xy, you know that the orbit the lobe here is in between x and y axis. Okay, so it is in between the these two axes. Okay xy in between the two axes, xy in between this axis, and similarly goes to here. So the same goes to the xz. Okay, and the orbital here refers to clover leaf, okay, which have four loops. So the similar thing to here, the xz in between x and z, they're going to be a drop. In between x and z, they're going to be another lobe. In between x and z, another lobe. In between x and z, another lobe here. And then similarly to dyz. Okay? And then for dx square y square, it's a little bit special because it is on the axis. Okay? So let's say if you have your x direction here, your y axis here, and then your z axis here. So dx square minus y square is going to be on top of the x axis and then on top of the y axis. Okay, so you're going to be looking something like this in the 3D form. Okay, so there are going to be three in between and one on the axis. And then the dz square here will have the shape of z square on top of the z square and then another ring here circling the z axis okay and this four here one two three four refers to the perpendicular where three of them is in between one of them on the x axis and one of the orbital here has a donut shape all right to understand more about that let us um, bring about the subtopic of quantum numbers that you have learned in the previous video and the shape of orbital that you have learned now. So this is something that I have covered in the previous video. And as I mentioned, um, the number of orbital will be depending on the m here. Okay. So in this case, the number of orbital here is 1. And this represents the 3s. So you know that n is equal to 3, l is equal to 0, then m equal to 0. Since because it has one digit here, so it's going to have one orbital. So 
you're going to draw it to be something like this because you only have one orbital. So for the three S, you draw X, Y, and Z, and then you need to draw a big sphere to show that it is has a high energy level. Okay, comparatively, if you were to draw 2s, it needs to be a little bit smaller. Okay, and here, the labeling here is compulsory. We have to label. All right, and for the 3p, as mentioned, they're going to have three possible values of m, which is when n is equal to 3, l is going to equal to 1, which is 3p, and then the m value here will have negative 1, 0, and plus 1. So we're going to have three orbitals, which is px, py, and pz. Okay, so we're going to draw each of these one by one. And since we are talking about the energy level of 3, so we're going to label it as 3px, and then we have 3py, and then 3 z. So the 3 px here means that the dumbbell will be on the x axis. Okay. And then for the 3 py, it means that the dumbbell is on the y axis. So we draw it nicely here. And then for the 3 pz, it means that the dumbbell is on the z axis. Right? So here is referring for the 3S, 3PX, 3PY, and 3PZ. And the labeling is compulsory. Okay? Now for this 3D. So you know that your N is equal to 3, your L is equal to 2, and then your M here is going to have five possible values, which is negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. So because you have five possible values, so you will have five orbital. So we're going to draw that one by one. So as usual, draw the axis first. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Everything needs to be level. Okay. So in this case, I will start with 3D X Y. So um, here I will draw it as 3D X Z. And then here I will have 3dyz, and then here I will have 3dx square minus y square, and then lastly I'm going to have 3dz square. And as mentioned, the the one that is xy, xz, and yz going to be in between the axes. So x and y. So in between x, 3x, and y. So in between x and y. Is going to be here and then here. And then x and y are going to be above the z axis, above the z axis. So we're going to have the orbital to be something like this a clover leaf in between x and y axis. Now for the 3 dxz, we're going to look between z and x axis. So in between x and z, we're going to have this lobe here. Okay. And then in between x okay, and z here. So we're going to have another lobe here. Okay. So as what you can see, um, when y is absent, so the lobe is going to be on y. When z is absent, then z is going to be, the lobe is going to be on z. And similarly to here, 3dyz, so you know this is your y, and this is your z. So you know that in between y and z, we're going to have a lobe on top of the x, and then in between y and z. Okay, so you're going to be looking something like this. Alright, 
and for the 3D x squared minus y squared, it means that it is on top of the x axis, and then it is on top of the y axis. All right, and then for the 3D z squared, it's going to be on the z axis. And then, because it is that square, it's going to have a ring circling that. Right? So this is how you draw each of this orbital one by one and to relate that with a quantum number. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!